I found an amazing ring. And there's an inscription engraved on it. The mythical ring of the Nibelung. Louis, do you really believe it's the ring of the legend? You should try it on. They say if you wear it on your finger, it makes you more agreeable. How droll. In the legend, it's a cursed ring. Emily, when I see that ring, I can no longer hold back my feelings for you. Oh, stop it. You're being ridiculous. What do you mean? I was just about to get down on one knee. Carry on searching. The heavenly symbols refer to Pandora's box. Emily, I'm pretty sure I've got Pandora's box. Of course you have. You see an earthen pot and you immediately assume it can only be Pandora's box. Logical. What I like about you, Louis, is that you never fail to surprise me. Emily, what if I open the jar? Would that then make man responsible for all the evils? Try. It'll make a change. All right, can we move on now? I do love your irony, but honestly, are you ever impressed by anything you see? By a chamber pot? No, you really do need to do better than that. A golden fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Cold? You want a rug? It'll warm you up. I wouldn't be caught dead in that horrible thing. <laughs> That's a pity. The gold color brings out your eyes. And your flattery brings out your boorishness. An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. The Gospel According to Judas, or How to Crucify Jesus as Part of God's Plan. You do realize that the contents of this book could undermine the very foundations of Christianity. One more reason to leave it in the secret room of a lost manor on a private island. Do you realize how important this book is? Of course, but what I really want to know is how did it come into Mortimer's possession? I was thinking the same thing about all the paintings and sculptures in the manor. Gee, is there anything England doesn't have yet? Wait, yes there is. The United States. Well, not yet. Besides, as far as I know, they don't speak French in the United States. Mortimer is the author of this work. He talks about his passion for art. Guess what I've found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's Laurel Reef. The workmanship on this crown is amazing. 
The finesse of the gold laurel leaves is beautiful. A crown worthy of an emperor. I'd stake my life that it's the genuine article. Stop! Don't put your grubby fat fingers on it. Do you find my fingers fat? <laughs> At least put on some gloves. Please note, my fingers are slim. You were going to leave marks. My god, what an amateur. Many a harpsichord player would love to have sexy fingers like mine. Tell me where you took your infiltration classes so I can have your tutor executed. Let's compare hands then. We'll soon see whose fingers are fattest. <laughs> no, I'm not going to compare hands with you. Let's just keep going. Bad loser. Well, oh, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes written by Mortimer himself. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. Brass quillins and knobs. A beautiful cruciform line. Judging by the wear and the technique used to forge it, this sword dates back to the Crusades, and it must have belonged to a wealthy knight. There's a date. MCXC. 1190. That's right. Forge for the Crusades. This weapon is typically French, quite old, undoubtedly goes back to the Crusades. If it is a true Damask sword, it's worth more than a kingdom. It really does look like Joan of Arc's sword. The famous Maid of Orléans, one of your favorite historical heroines. You bet, given the number of English butts she kicked. And we all know where that got her. When you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? 